for those that are able, of course. Amen. Hand in hand with Jesus. Amen. That meant something to me for well, this sermon. And you may say, well, how in the world does that have anything to do with a bloat max head? <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, you can, there's two ways of living in this world. One's without God and one's hand in hand with him. And if you want to you try doing it without him, then you just put yourself in the shoes of this fella who lost his axe head. And you'll figure out... Uh, what life's like without God and uh, and that so <coughs> very appropriate song. Second Kings chapter number six, begin reading in verse number one. It said, "The sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. When it says too straight, that means it's too small. We need bigger, okay." Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, Go ye. And one said, Be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. <laughs> and so he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was falling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man <coughs> of God said, Where fell it? And he shoved him a place, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. And therefore said he, Take it up to thee, and he put out his hand, and he took it. Heavenly Father God, thank you for the scriptures here. Now God, I do believe this is more than just a, a miracle of a floating axe head. I believe there's something for us here today. God, speak to us, your children, and to those that do not know you, God, whether they be watching later at some point. Father God, I pray that your Holy Spirit, God, would deal with us as you see fit. And that, Lord, uh, souls would be saved and your children be edified and exhorted to the work that lies before them. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <coughs> well, praise the Lord. Again, as we've seen the scripture here, as I was praying, I thought I believe there's surely something uh, in here more than just uh, an axe head flying off going in the water and then a miracle done he throws in a cuts a stick throws it in there and it iron swims i mean that's a miracle amen uh iron don't typically swim amen <laughs> some of some of us have a hard time swimming amen, amen. You know, a little lead in the rear end a little too much <laughs> and uh, don't want to don't want to don't want to be able to swim but Again, I believe that there's uh, a message here, and I wanted to uh, I wanted to look here about this when you've lost the cutting edge, or I might say how to recover the cutting edge. Okay, now I don't want to be too hard on uh, this man right here that lost the axe head. Uh, I don't want to be too hard on him because he set out with good intentions. Okay. He set out on a on a on a worthy endeavor. He wanted to do something for God. Amen. And we can all be encouraged this morning to, to get up and get busy doing something for God. Amen. And uh, so give him a round of applause. Don't know his name, but he wanted to do something for God. And if you want to do something uh, for God, amen, we have opportunities. Amen. And he said, I'd like to do something for God. And the man of God said, well, just have at it. Amen. And that brings me to, to this right here about how we can uh, recover the cutting edge, so to speak. Okay. Uh, it involves some things. And if we'll, uh, 
if we'll look at the Bible, it'll tell us how to get it back. Because there's a, well, a lot of us, that like I found myself this past week. I had a tree limb that had fallen in my mother's uh, yard. And I took my chainsaw and uh, uh, went to uh, take make little pieces out of this big piece. Okay? And, uh, and I was having trouble. My saw didn't want to cut on a straight uh, line through the log. It wanted to wander <laughs> and make all kinds of go different directions. And uh, I was putting forth too much effort and there wasn't much getting done. You know, I wanted to see the sawdust fly, but it was, it was dusty all right, but not big chips. It was just small, and I wasn't getting anything done. And uh, I thought, well, this saw, it's got plenty of fuel, it's got plenty of oil, it's fine-tuned, there's nothing wrong with the spark plug, there's nothing wrong with the firing, there's nothing wrong with the fuel, air, mix, any of those things. The problem, obviously, was a dull a chain, a dull chain. And uh, so the thing to do was just quit. I was wasting my time. I wasn't getting anything done. Now, this is not a call to quit. This is a call to getting back the cutting edge this morning. There, there's plenty of folks that's wanting to quit. There's a lot of people that have tried and tried and tried and they're not gone anywhere, and they're just on the verge of giving up, quit. They're exhausted, they're burnt out in the ministry and everything. And the problem is, is they're trying and trying and trying. And the, 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 the key is, is just surrendering to God and letting God work through us, okay? That's, that's how, so how can I get to that point once again? For those that are trying and trying and trying, for those that are getting burnt out, for those that don't seem to be uh, getting uh, anywhere with God, or church attendance seems to be stagnant, it doesn't seem like souls are being saved, what can we do? Let's remind ourselves of this passage right here and see, first of all, if you're taking notes, number one, there was a commission involved here. There was a commission. <clears throat> There was an asking of permission to go. Let's do something for for God, and and I, I see here in uh, in uh, the example of Elisha, I see a little bit of Jesus in this man right here. Okay, and I I believe when when I see in that Elisha uh, tell this man, he said to go ye. Go forth. And that reminds me of Jesus Christ telling his disciples and telling his church and telling us to go ye into all the world. Amen. We have been given a, a commission in that by the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Just like Elisha sent them forth to get busy doing the work of God, can I tell you what? The Lord Jesus has put us on a mission to go get busy telling the good news Amen. of Jesus Amen. Christ. Uh, we, never, we should not forget that we too have been told to go. Go ye. That could be you today. It is you today. It's not the missionary that goes across the sea. It is not the pastor that goes to the pulpit. It is the whole body of Christ. Every born again child of God has been told to go in that. And it is time for us to get busy. Commission to go ye. Now I like this too. I also see Jesus in that and where somebody spoke up and they said, Elisha said, how about you coming with us? How about you being a part of it uh, to go with thy servants? And Elisha quickly and without hesitation said, I will go. Amen. Ain't it good to know that when we do something for the Lord, we're also doing it with the Lord? Amen. When we do something for God, we're not alone, praise the Lord. He said, I will go with thee, praise God. I will go with you into that. I will, I will go with you on that visitation. I will go with you into the battle. I'll go with you to that hospital. I'll go with you to that nursing home. I'm glad that we don't have to go alone. It is not a mission of one. It is a commission 
of tune when we go into the work of the Lord. So remember that we too have a commission to go. Go into all the world, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe whatsoever things that I have told you. And lo, what? I'm with you always. Amen. Amen. And you don't have to don't have to ask. I'll be there. Amen. So it involves a commission. Now, this actually, this happened here where the man is on a mission, but, but uh, he's doing well. And then here we find out not only does this passage involve a, a commission, it also has a concern. And we see the concern raised in verse number five. As one was fight, failing a beam, the axe head fell off in the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master. Alas. Folks, all of a sudden there's a great concern. Why? Because he's lost the cut bench, right? Mm -hmm. he, he's, uh, he, he's, he's there with an with a axe handle and, 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 and no cutting edge. And if he keeps on, his hands is going to be very sore in just a minute as he keeps flailing away at that uh, tree uh, with another stick of wood. As soon as the man feels the axe head fly off, it, it troubles him. Folks, and that when, when we have gotten to a place that we're not being efficient for God and we're, and we're not being useful to the Lord's work, it ought to concern us, amen. There should be a concern here. And so he knows that he just can't continue with what he's doing until he recovers what is lost right there. Folks, the first step to getting the cutting edge back in that, it, the first step in recovering the power of God back on our life in, in, in that, is coming to a place uh, to know that we don't have it anymore. I believe that folks have gotten so used to going through the motions at church that they can almost have church have church, whatever that means to some folks, in the flesh and not even notice that the Spirit of God's not in you. We go in, we, 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 get, we get our programs and we can do all of these things and we get it so that we're so comfortable. And a lot of churches, if the Spirit of God were withdrawn on them and withdrawn from them and that, they could just continue on as if nothing had ever happened, folks. I'm, I'm convinced that... Uh, some some of God's children are to be concerned today. Concerned. Now a lot of people don't even know it. They're, they're, like the, they're like the church of the Laodiceans in Revelation chapter number three. And, and we see there a, a church that, that, that has lost uh, uh, their cutting edge for, for the Lord uh, in, in the Revelation uh, chapter three, uh, verse number 14, God is... Uh, going in the midst of the candlesticks. And uh, he said, uh, he said, I'm down in verse 15, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, you, you think that everything's just fine. You think you're just going along and serving me and that everything's just like it always has been. But he said, not so, not so. He said, you're lukewarm. You're neither cold nor hot. And he said, I don't like that. I will spew thee out of my mouth. He said, why? Because, God says, because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art rich. You don't know that you've lost your cutting edge. You're wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And folks, that's not what this lost dying world needs. This, this lost dying world doesn't need a blind and a naked and a wretched church. It needs a church in that that is humble and full of the love of God and the Spirit of God is upon us. And we're serving the Lord with gladness. This church needs a fired up, sharp church. This world needs it. They don't, need, they don't need a dull church just going through the motions, not making a dent. Not so much. That man has lost the, the uh, cutting edge, and he knows if he keeps on what he's doing, he's not going to make a dent. And there's a lot of churches that are content 
for not making a dent. We may not be making much of a, of a dent, and this pastor and that may not be uh, filling up this place, but I'm going to tell you what, it concerns me. It concerns me. Amen. We Amen. want to be doing more for the Lord. Amen. Amen. We are to be content with just us and, and, and no more. Okay? We we ought to we want to ought to want to 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 do things for the glory of God and to Amen. do our best. Amen. Now, I just wonder whether or not that we care enough to search our hearts and, and to and look at our lives and discover what this man here discovered that that hey the axe head's gone and the presence and the power of God might be might be gone in the midst of our church. Uh, praise the Lord for a concern, and I hope we'll all take heart this morning, more than just show up at church, but that we will be in that showing up sharp and ready and prepared. That we come to church and, and we, we leave here ready, ready, ready to face this world, whatever comes our way. May the Lord help us to settle for nothing less than his very best. Amen. Amen. All right. So there's a commission. There was a concern. Let's go back to where we're at. There was also a confession. There was a confession right here. Not only did he realized it was gone. He confessed it, right? He didn't try to hide the fact. It would be it would be fool, foolish to keep on pretending at that point. Uh, he would have been the butt of all jokes. Okay, uh, he could have denied. No, I'm doing fine. No, you're not doing fine. Uh, it's very obvious here. He confessed it when he realized the axe head is gone. He goes and he immediately tells Elisha what happened. Again, another type of the Lord Jesus Christ right here. You know, I see that. I see one that we can go to this, this morning and confess to. Amen. I, I'm not taking the part of Elisha in this. Jesus is the mediator between God and man. It, I must tell Jesus, the songwriter said. I must tell Jesus uh, all of my trials. Uh, I cannot bear my troubles alone. Didn't say go tell a priest or the Pope or anybody else. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. I'm just saying that well, this is Jesus here that we need to be confessing to. After we discover that there's an issue, then let's quit pretending. Let's quit faking. Let's quit all of that denying that there's a problem. It, 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 it may be a hard pill to swallow, but it's necessary to recovering the cutting edge, and that is to tell the Lord about it. Amen. Just tell him I, I don't have the fire I used to. I don't. I don't have the zeal that I used to. I'm not as close to you, Lord. I feel distant from you, I, I, from what I used to. I, what it is, I just need the power of God back on my life. Tell him, church. Tell him. We need to be honest. We need to be honest. Come clean with the Lord. That's confession. Okay. Before we ever get back that cutting edge, there must be a, a confession. Okay. Not only did it did, did it uh, have did he have a, 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 a confession here, but he goes on and he says, "For it was borrowed." Now, some he had he, you know at one time I read in the in one of the, in First or Second Samuel one where where there were no blacksmiths in the in the nation. One of them, one of them had come and taken all the blacksmiths because they knew the blacksmiths were making weapons. Okay, and uh, and, they, and that made them weak. Well, I mean, uh, all of the act, the blacksmiths gone. I mean, you, you just you couldn't just run down to the to the local hardware store and get another axe head, you know, like you can today. I mean, and 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 and, and so they were. There was something cherished and he said somebody's loaned this to me and it's going to be a bad uh, witness if i if i've lost this thing that somebody loaned to me and I mean, like john loaning loaning me his, his craftsman chainsaw and uh and uh, you know just say hey man i don't know I'm, I'm left it in the back of the truck somebody come got it whoops oops ain't no oops okay he ain't gonna be happy with that okay He's going to want a chainsaw back, okay? 
And, uh, and so he, he says it, it, is, it is barred. I think that was one of the reasons the man was so upset that this didn't even belong to him. He borrowed it from somebody else to help build his building and that. And to think that somebody trusted him enough to loan it to him, amen, and that he, he didn't want to, to violate that trust and he wanted to be true, okay? I'm going to tell you this. Here again, an application for us, okay? When we, now get me, when we are working for the Lord, we're working for the Lord, we're operating with borrowed power. Amen. 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 You better be. Yes. You're working in your own power. Your own power is going to run out a little bit. But I have got a power that don't come from flesh and bone. Okay? Amen. This power don't come from eating your Wheaties in the morning. Okay? It don't, it don't come from a, a, a cup of caffeine and a little boost picker up. Or, this kind of, Jesus said, and I shall give thee power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon thee. Now that word power is the word dunamis. And the word dunamis is miracle power. It's miraculous power. I looked it up this morning. It means the power of a mighty army, as in the power of numbers. And so you being one, don't just have the power of one, you have a miracle power of a, as if it were a mighty mass of people, okay? And it's dynamis. You know what that sounds like? Sounds like our word dynamite. J.J. Walker, dynamite. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I've got some dynamite power. I've got some dynamis power. I've got power that don't come from this. It comes from him above. I am preaching on borrowed power this morning. I am witnessing on borrowed power. This didn't come from me. It's come from God. Amen. Glory to God. We got to remember this. We're not out here doing this in our own power. And he said, I shall give you power after that. The Holy Ghost has come upon you. We need to be careful with that power, amen. We need to make sure that, we need to make sure that, I'll use a, a worldly illustration, we need to make sure that all lines are clear, amen. amen. Because I'm going to tell you what, this power comes from a source, okay? And if anything comes between us, if a big old log falls in your spiritual life and tears down that connection with God, you got sin in your life. The Bible says the Lord's ears not uh, heavy that he cannot hear. And his arms not short that he cannot reach. It says your sins. Your sin, my sin. Okay, I'll point this way. If you don't like me pointing that way, I can point this way. My sins have come between me and God. They have severed that line just like a big old dead pine tree, okay? And now you're going through life and you think, man, I'm not getting anywhere. I don't, I don't feel the power of God on my life anymore. I'm not as close to the Lord as I once said. Bless God, it's because you haven't maintained the line. You got to maintain that line. Yes. Right, a good place to start is coming out to church, amen? amen? That's a good place, amen, to be. To maintain the line. To make sure if there's if they something getting a little, a little dead in your life. That, hey, we're not going to let that thing come crashing down right when we most need God. Right when we need Him the most. And all of a sudden something's come crashing down. Uh, some habits pop back up. Uh, some sin has crept back into our lives. And now we need God and, he, and, 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 and we got too much confessing today. We better be prayed up and ready, amen, and keep that line clean, amen. amen. So, that they, that, okay, <clears throat> we got to comprehend this, okay? Because God help us to, to know that God gives us his power, and that power can be lost in a, in a, in a moment if we're not careful. How, how we take care of it. All right? So uh, what have we got here? We've got a commission. <clears throat> we got a concern. What was the other? We had a confession. And we had a comprehension. 
Anybody notice the seas? I bet there's another coming up. <laughs> Amen. There is. You're right. There's a coming back. All right. There's a there's a coming back. All right. Now let's look right here. As soon as Elisha heard about the problem, he called this man back to the. He said, "What what did he say? <clears throat> Where found it? <clears throat> well, show me, show me where you lost him." Take me to the place. All right. And he took him to the place. Okay. He called that pro he called that man back, and I'd say he was a prophet too, back where the axe head was lost. Before it could be recovered, they had to go back to where it was lost in the first place. Couldn't say, well, let's go over here and look. Let's go over there and look. Let's go right here where, where the problem, where, where it happened. To the scene of the crime, so to speak. All right? That's the same thing, too. I, I tell you what, before we get back to get back to that old time Holy Ghost power on our life, we're going to have to get back to some places. We're going to have to return. Return to the place. Hey, let's go back to the where we lost that power. Amen? Let's go. I would say, oh, well, I went out and... and uh, and, and a barn drunk it up and got, got wasted one night. I'm not telling you to go back there. I'm just talking about go back to that place in your life and remember that. It, okay, let's confess that, that night. Let's confess that day, okay? <clears throat> let's, let's go to that. And then, as, as, as the Lord said, let's you remember thy former works and then go and repeat them to the church at Ephesus, I believe it was there in the Revelation. He said, remember thou thy first works. Let's go back to that place where you was really chopping wood. Let's go back where the chips were flying and the trees were falling. Let's, let's get back to that place. You see, there has to be a coming back in, in that to recover that cutting edge. We're going to be honest. We could all pinpoint areas in our lives that something or something came between us and God. We got sideways. We may have got sideways with somebody at the church. We may have let that creep in, and now we got to let that get between us and God. There, there are places in our life, if we're honest, that, that we could go back to and say, yeah, it all started right there. I, 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 knew, I know from that point, I've been going away from God from there ever since. There's some, some place in that that we can remember. We need to go back to that place. Uh, and, and from there, start plotting a, a, a choice of correct, a, a corrective action, if you will. On that Sunday school book down there is a big old compass, okay? And there's sometimes we just need, we got off track. We got lost out here in the wilderness. All right, let's get back to, let's return back. Let's get back to God and let's get our compass back out and let's start following true north. It's always going to point to God. Okay, let's 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 get back here. A lot of people have forgot their compass. A lot of people have forgot their guide. Don't believe it anymore. They've listened to the devil. And we got we got to we got to get back to the point and start making corrections there. All right. And then we, when we do, then we can start preparing for the for the for the cutting edge to come back. And so <clears throat> he says, "Where was it?" And he showed him showed him the place. Uh, and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Not only does it involve a coming back, but there must have been a confrontation involved right here. Cut down a tree, cast it in the river. Axe head floats to the surface. Wow. I, 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 I didn't, the Lord has sent me on a different direction right here, but I, I want to say this. About 2,000 years ago, there was a, another tree cut down. And I don't, I, I assume that somebody had a, took an axe to it, and they cut down a, 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 a tree. And they began to take and they began to hew it out and everything and they made a big old straight beam out of it. And then they, they cut and they got another beam out of this tree and they laid it across and they made a big old cross out of it and they hung my Lord Jesus Christ on that and crucified him on that tree. Folks, I'm going to tell you what a lot of people are missing today. They ain't no tree in their life. There's no cross in their life. They've got, they've got good works. 
They've got doing the best they can. They've got trying to help their neighbor. They've got their name on a roll book. They've been sprinkled, dumped, and dipped, and, and, and everything. But they don't have a cross. They've never come to Jesus Christ, crucified, and trusted in him, and said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner, save my soul. We need to get back to the cross. We need to get back to the cross. And I'll tell you, that's one of, one of the primary, that is the, the step. It, it's one of many. There comes, there has to be a, a, a realization and there has to be a, 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 a what would we call it? A, a, a conviction of our sin and a confession of our sin and a calling upon the Lord. That just to be saved, amen. And then those same steps come back into getting, getting back, getting back the cutting edge. Folks, we better not skip straight too far from the old rugged cross. That's right. That's right. We better we better hold dear to it. Amen. We better remember right there what Christ did. This do in remembrance of me. Amen. At the cross. And so so he, he cuts down the stick, casts it in. I'm gonna tell you what, the, the, the tree's already been cut down. You don't have to cut that tree across the Calvary. Christ already, the sacrifice has already been made, glory to God. You don't have to make a sacrifice. Christ, sacrifice for sins, already died for you. Now all you need to do is open up your heart and let him come in. Let him come in. You just say, cast, just, just like casting that, that cut down stick in the water, just open your heart and Jesus will come in. He'll cast out the sin. Put his Holy Spirit in. Glory to God, you ain't never been so saved. Amen. 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 Uh, <clears throat> and then to close. Then to, then to close. It says there, it's swimming. You're going to stand there and admire it. Would you look at that? <laughs> well, would you look at that? <clears throat> look at that. Look at that iron swimming down. Come on, get, get the boys over here. Come on, would you look at that? They stand there and look at it and look at it. And folks, he reached in there and got it, didn't he? That's what some folks need to do today. Amen. Amen. Salvation is right within reach. Amen. Take it. Receive it. But as many as believed upon them, them gave him power to become the sons of God. As many as that believed upon his name. That, that, I just receive the gift. I, I mean, it's, it's there, praise God. Now you can stand around and behold it. You can stand around and look at the church. Think about what all the Christians are doing today. Or you can reach out and grab salvation by the, by the, by the, by the hands, amen, today, by faith. Grab a hold of salvation and make it yours, amen. amen. And witness it for first hand. <laughs> He just, he just received that by faith. Amen. He said, well, what if I reach out there and it goes under? I just said, that. It's, it's there. Amen. Folks, you, you, you're not going to go under with Jesus. Amen. Just reach out there and take it by faith. And he got it. He <coughs> took it. <coughs> Wonder what he did. Well, if he was Baptist, he got it. He dried it off, oiled it up. Put it on the shelf. He said, that will not ever happen again. <laughs> no. Dude, it's not, not God's plan. Mm -mm. Now, the one that never makes the mistakes, the one that never does anything to begin with, all right? right. So God didn't give you this, this salvation to hide it under a bushel. God didn't give, give you this, this cutting edge, this, this, this message of salvation impart you with the Holy Spirit to go and bury it in the ground and have it for safekeeping, put it up on a shelf in this, in whatever. It does not say right here. Does not say. Don't think it has to be said. The assumption is he put that thing back on the handle and got yeah. back to work. Amen. That's the assumption Amen. today. So many people are assuming they just get saved. I'll never have to do anything again. Listen, the assumption in the days of the Old Testament was is that you're going to work for the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Why? Because you like it. Amen. Uh, <clears throat> so there was a commitment. There was a commitment. To reach out and took it, folks. 
How many of you are going to reach out and take it today? God's best. Experiencing God's manifest presence in our lives. Doing something. Let's make a den. Let's make a den. Just heard about these two old lumber. There was a two lumberjacks. One was an old weathered man, had a long beard. His hands were calloused. He had spent years and years of experience cutting wood. And then and he alongside him was a was a, a new feller. He's just he was just uh, in the prime of his life. He he was uh, he was full of energy, uh, bright eyed, working side by side, cutting a tree. The old man, he's cutting any trees. Everyone he every time he'd cut one down, he'd sit down for a while. The other young young other young buck, he's out there just, just chopping away making a tree. He said, oh man, you ain't getting nothing done. He said, I bet I can cut twice as much wood as you can in a day. The old man said, I don't believe you can, son. I've been watching you. <clears throat> he said, you've been watching? Yeah, you've been doing too much watching, he said. But you get up and cut. He said, I'll take that bet. So he did. Got up there cutting. At the end of the day, the old man, the old man had cut twice as much as the young man. Oh, he'd still been sitting down. But while he was sitting down, he's sharpening that ax. <laughs> he said, son, he said, I noticed that. He said, I watched you first couple you cut while I sat there sharpening my ax. He said, you just out there just go as fast as you can. He said, your ax is dull, boy. And he said, uh, you've got a thing or two you can learn from, from the old man. And uh, I just wonder if there's a lot of us just, uh, just out there wildly flashing thrashing around, whatever. Maybe, maybe it's time like this we just have a church service on a Sunday morning. Maybe God's just going to sharpen, sharpen the axe. Amen. 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 All right. Seventh day, God rested. There's coming a day of rest. A big old long Sabbath going to last forever and ever and ever. Until then, we're on a commission. Let's make sure that we've got our, our cutting edge. Okay? Let's stand, and uh, we'll give a we'll, we'll give it a.